So, hi, hi. Congratulations on your Nebby Award. Thank you. I'm so excited to have you talking to us about what's coming up this year. Yeah. So, uh, what do we start out with in the 2015-16 season? Um, the first show this summer is a three-man show. Um, Roger Green, Bill Hodge, and Stephen Rock. And these are all local Seattle artists, right? Um, they're all regional. Okay. So, mostly Seattle, some um, sprinkled around. Uh, and so, first up is Roger Green. Yeah. Talk to us a little bit about his work. Um, wow, it's really hard to see the screen, but hey, I, I know what's on there. <laughs> so, um, yeah, okay, that's better. So, um, so all three of these guys uh, are kind of taking bits of unexpected materials and putting them together to make new things um, in different media. So their their work is quite different from each other, but. Um, they have a kind of, um, I don't know, weird guy out in the shop sort of aesthetic. In <laughs> 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 a good way, in a really good way. In the best way. Yeah, in the best way, yeah. Um, so in addition to Roger's work, yeah. we also have Bill, Bill Hodge. Hodge, who um, he makes these um, beautiful sort of abstract um, images that could look sort of like pixels, like di digital um, pixelated photography. Um, but actually, they're little pieces of plywood um, that have been glued together and then cut into strips. And then he arranges them um, into these sort of patterns and um, designs. This mosaic. Yeah. So, and then Stephen Rock is something totally different. Yeah, so, um, so Stephen, I'm especially excited to have him um, in the gallery, he's one of our best volunteers um, <coughs> in the gallery program. Um, and he's also a great artist. Uh, his work, which I don't know if you can really make it out, but he's um, inspired by the, the uh, sort of modern day hieroglyphs that we're all making when we use social media and um, take language and abbreviate it and um, make acronyms and, and make our own weird new symbols that are no longer words, but represent words and language in a, in a really strange, new, interesting way. So he's kind of riffing off of language and um, social media and <coughs> making these sort of new conglomerations of, of language-like imagery. So these three gentlemen will be showing in our gallery in the first show of our 2015-16 season together. In a group show. And then the next show. So that will be during the education program. Ah, this summer, so yeah. then this one is the one that yeah. will coincide with American Indian. Right. Um, and so Matt and I were talking, and I was kind of trying to think of um, common themes that are shared with the gallery exhibitions and the theater shows. and. Max and Joe, um, Max Cleary and Joe Rudko. Um, I mean, I think they, they, if I was looking at themes common with American Idiot, I think I could see some um, sort of coming of age grappling with um, how their own identity works in with dominant cultural messages. Um, and they're doing it in really subtle, abstract ways, which is really different from a musical theater. <laughs> so, um, so Max is, is really inspired by um, sort of childhood memories, and uh, this image is uh, worked into into the single image as his grandmother and his sister. Um, so. And then Joe uh, uses photography to um, he manipulates the photographs and then turns them into new, um, often sort of abstract that have sort of themes of nostalgia and um, memory also. Mm -hmm. Certainly something that applies to our whole season. Yes. Um, OK, good. So then after those guys, who do we have next? Oh, solo show. Yeah, so this is the only solo show, um, Marco Quan Knight. Um, she is an amazing artist who works in a lot of different media. Um, she has a really strong conceptual background, so every project she does has a, a lot of thought behind it. Um, this series of work is, uh, um, it's a process called cyanotypes, um, which is kind of, it's related to photography in that it's an image that's produced by um, a material exposed to light um, really quickly. Um, but these are um, often, the cyanotypes are usually 
usually made in the sun, um, and these are huge. They're made on sheets, like giant bed sheets. Um, and the imagery that she's working from is um, uh, different kinds of doilies and tablecloths and um, giant, you know, uh, woven and thread-based work that um, is traditionally women's work um, in a variety of cultures. And so this piece. Um, was, the, the history is, is really interesting. Her grandfather was a, a doctor and he was treating a prostitute who couldn't pay for treatment. And so she paid, she paid him with a, a tablecloth um, that she had made. Um, actually, I'm not sure if she had made it with her grandmother, but, um, but it was something that Margot's grandfather kept um, in their family up and, you know, through the present day. Um, and they also kept the letter of reprimand that her grandfather received for accepting the tablecloth as payment. <laughs> <laughs> and this uh, is my favorite exhibit coming up next year for a reason that Suzanne and I joke about all the time. Because when I first met her, it became very readily apparent. She asked me which exhibits I liked the best. And it became very clear to her that the only things that I really like are things that are blue. <laughs> <laughs> I set her up. Um, so this is one of my favorite exhibits, and this runs concurrently with. Does it? Oh yeah, no. Um, my manana comes, okay. which is nice. Um, just the uh, I don't know. There's themes of um, the value of the work of marginalized American families. Um, so yeah. And then in the winter we have this nice show. Okay, Colleen R.J.C. Bratton and Paulina Tereshina. Um, so this is actually during Really, Really. Um, and I actually could not really conceive of a more different <laughs> art show than, than the play um, Really, Really. Um, really, Really is really, really kind of brash and kind of overconfident and, you know, obnoxious possibly. And these two are really um, sort of subtle and interested in uh, what is, um, I thought it right, right? It, these are the two that, yeah, that are really, really um, uh, sort of subtleties and um, I don't know, maybe even venturing into the vulnerable and possibly embarrassing. So Colleen is kind of taking typical macho abstract minimalist painting and making it out of um, fiber and reclaimed, reused um, fabric. Um, so she's kind of taking abstract painting and making it embarrassing. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> and then with Colleen, we have. And then Paulina Hiroshina <coughs> is um, making work about uh, private, like just the notion of private moments and um, what people would like to hide. Um, so. Uh, so what's next? Then Colleen Cap and Shaw Osha. Um, these two are both uh, working with the idea of the stage, um, interestingly. Um, Carolyn uh, makes these amazing videos that are inspired by um, this uh, 16, 16th century Dutch painting, um, still life tradition. And she makes videos based on that tradition that um, she hangs them like as paintings on the gallery wall and then the video slowly, subtly changes. So it's like a moving, changing still life. And she's excited to actually um, do make a body of work related to Violet, um, which is exciting. Um, that doesn't happen often, yeah. Um, and then Shaw Osha uh, is working with the concept of the stage in a different way. She, um, for this project, she took um, the stage of our cell phones and the stage that, or the, the role that they played in um, kind of social media's exposure of what happened in Ferguson. And so this is the, um, these are paintings that she made based on cell phone um, videos and photography of the, the killing of Kajimi um, Powell. Yeah. Okay, so this is one of my favorites also, but what's up after that? Uh, Julie Alexander and Alicia Van Deren, um, they um, are also, it's kind of similar to Colleen and Paulina. Um, they're both kind of working with unexpected materials in the realm of abstract painting, um, especially Julie. Um, she kind of takes 
takes the seriousness of abstract painting and then adds crazy things that you wouldn't expect. Um, and they, she really gives abstract painting a sense of humor um, with her work. Um, and it's, I mean, it's also actually a really serious conversation around painting. It's that um, is part of a kind of bigger, um, broader um, contemporary conversation that is really exciting to, that we'll be having here. Uh, and then uh, Elysia is working with um, like doilies and manipulating them, or not doilies, handkerchiefs, um, and then embroidering them and manipulating them in ways that are also sort of referencing the domestic um, and the feminine and sort of putting it on its head. And then the last show is um, Nola Avien and Ellen Ziegler. Um, they, so they will also be actually during the next education program. Um, and uh, this show is gonna be sort of a subtle, I think beautiful show just where people will get to appreciate the materials used and the, um, maybe the abstract narratives that will unfold um, from them. So Nola uh, often works with um, blood. She's, she kind of has a part-time job as a phlebotomist. <laughs> Susanna's work in 